Hi guys, welcome back to Kit Car Direct and MK Sports Cars. We're over in the showroom section here. Well, what we got up in the show today? Well, for starters, we're going to be talking about what's over here, a low-cost chassis. And for dessert, we are going to teach Anna how to test drive a bike engine car. Roll those VTs. Right guys, we're standing over here. We've got two chassis here. Now, what have we got? Well, we've got the Indy RX-5 chassis here, which is a left-hand drive car. Uh, it's gonna be going out uh, abroad, of course. And also, the first off the line is the low-cost chassis. It's a, not a new concept. The MK low-cost has been around for several years, um, but we've brought it back in production, and this is gonna be heading off uh, to Norway. This is also a left-hand drive car. And what's the difference, you probably think, between the two? Well, the first comparison is inboard suspension, outboard suspension, this is a short chassis, this is a longer chassis. This is based on uh, the low cost book chassis. So actually this panel height here is about 30 mil shorter actually. You can see the difference quite a bit, um, even in my arm length straight away um, between the two and the sides. Um, center tunnel, completely different um, how we do it. Um, so it's based on, again, low cost on the book chassis. Um, and then if you look at the height alone on these two, the center tunnel and the, the shape of it all, um, this uses the Mazda handbrake. This will use a forward-based handbrake mechanism. And the back end is where it all completely uh, changes. Well, I couldn't even compare it. This is a live axle car. So a floating axle out of your Escorts, Cortinas, etc., cetera, um, which is why you have these for your four links. Um, this has a pan hold rod that goes from left to right onto the axle, whereas obviously the rear on these, and Anna will spin round for you and show you, this is all obviously independent rear suspension on here, which is all the Mazda base one for the Mazda diff and uh, that mounts on this top section here, whereas that's a floating axle. You can see there's quite a big difference, triangulation, how all this works in comparison to this, which is, you know, we have the roll cage section in here, uh, and this is a traditional brace that's required for their race series, and this has got the 50 mil cage on here, Big old lump, I mean, that's as strong as old boots in there. And obviously your fuel tank mankin brackets, they're slightly different. So you see there is a two difference, but we have kicked in um, the low cost back into production. We're bringing it out. So if you're wanting, knowing for more information about the low cost chassis, if you're looking aboard for say left-hand drive, both of these are left-hand drive cars, and whether you want a roll cage or not, we can still look to, to entertain you. So yeah, big difference. Um, this is a bit heavier because it's got the roll cage on with the, with the side impact bars. Um, there's some more sheet steel in here uh, with a bracketry and that. But other than that, there's not really much difference in these top rails here. Pretty much same geometry. So our bodywork, i.e. bonnet, um, uh, scuttle, uh, rear tub, and that all fit nose cone. But the side panels are completely different because most of the low costs in the early days were aluminium skinned. Um, so our side panels do not fit, unfortunately. They are a difference in height, but that's the only difference comparison. Um, steering rack's all the same. So it'd be an escort based rack, and we use that on both cars now. Although the bracketry looks different, they'd still use the same rack. So, and this is set up really for, well, you can do it either. We can do a car engine or bike engine choice on these. So just to really, introduce the low-cost uh, MK chassis back into the fold and say, tap us up if you want to know any more information about it. Right guys, so we are in the MK Indy RX5 MC. We've had a couple of people requesting <laughs> about how easy it is to drive a pull-away in a bike engine car. So what we've decided today is to put someone in the car, Anna, um, who's never driven one before and let on a bike engine car. So can we teach Anna how to pull away in a bike engine car and how difficult it is? Well, it's not simple, but it's, it's one of them things you, once you've learned to ride a bike, you can always ride a bike. And this is exactly the same analogy. So what we're gonna do now is, Anna's looking a little bit- <laughs> Yeah, no judgment. No yeah, judgment thanks. about it is and all the gears. So we're gonna teach her how to do it. So first thing is, is understanding the gears. So it's a paddle shift, so, this one is for up, uh, down, this one is for up. So when you pull this one, it's for first gear. So you put the clutch in, exactly, and then you pull the lever forward. Now that's first gear. Now if you click this back, half a click on that side towards you, now we have neutral. Neutral, right. So okay. it's half, so that'll be first. And then when you go 
all the other lever going back, you can go into neutral and then into second, to third, to fourth, to fifth, to sixth. Oh, so you've got to go first, then... Then second, and then third, oh, and then okay. fourth, and then fifth. Not that we've got to get six. We're no. on private <laughs> land where we're doing this today. So what I've got to do now is get to feel the accelerator pedal. So just give it a few light revs. A bit more. A bit more. Yeah. <laughs> She's lively. So the accelerators on the right are extremely light for that reason. So what we're going to do now, we're going to attempt number one. Now she's never driven it, so we'll see. Take number one. <laughs> Neil will not be Take one. That's it. Take one. So we're going to go clutch in. First gear. A little bit of revs. Handbrake off. I'll do that for you. Thank little you. Little bit of revs. And feel the bike point. Feel the bike point. Build a bike point and accelerate, accelerate. Go on, oh, yeah, go on. Fly off. Yeah! yeah <laughs> Take one. Who says you can't put away and never driven a bike into before? Sean, I did it. Straighten out. Is there a car? That's it. I can't see anything in this right. thing. So, what we got there is a classic example of skill. <laughs> skill by Anna there. Um, to actually. You know, they're not that difficult. How difficult was that? That was really hard. That was, <laughs> that was really, it was so close. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right, so we'll do it again. Clutch in, first gear. Take two. Take two. Can we stall it or can we go? We're going to go back up again. Here we go. Little bit of accelerate here. Remember the clutch. Remember the clutch. Perfect, 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 perfect. Here we go. Excellent. Right, now we're gonna a little bit more acceleration. Okay. A little bit more, 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 okay. more, 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 more. Now full second, clutch in second. Clutch. This one. That's there it. Go. There we go. <laughs> second gear. And, and then how do I go back down this that's one? That's it, back down, that's it. Go oh, down. Wow. Probably had to do that in one circle. Look at this. Unnatural. And who says you can't drive a bike engine car? And you've never driven it before? Well, I say, Anna can. <laughs> Anna can! Oh, okay. Get out! <laughs> <laughs> oh, this will do. This is fun! And in the neutral, click that down up, half a click. Oh, that one. No, this one. Oh, up, half a click. Cut. There we go. Oh, there go. And neutral. <laughs> yeah! Can you drive a bike engine car? Never you. driven one before? Yes, you can. Do you think that, Mum? Easy. <laughs> Job. <laughs> oh, nothing. Is that it? Oh. If you like what you see in your engineer kit cars, guys, then um, why not subscribe to our channel? Press subscribe, click on the bell icon, press all, and it send you notifications each week. All right, guys, back in the workshop quickly. We're going to have a little scoot round in here, show you what's been going on. Um, the Indy Classic here with the little blade in it. You see now this has been progressing over the last sort of week or two. We're, ironing out some niggly problems. We've got to the testing stage, it's all back together now pretty much. Finished off, some bits of wiring that are needed. The interior is done, um, a bit nice and a bit neater, new dashboard in, etc. as well. Um, it's all been wired and plumbed up and hopefully, probably, we'll see if she fires up. The battery's a little bit weak on this, we know, but we'll see if she goes. So yeah, engine's running. That will sound probably terrible on the video, but actually, we killed that now, but she's all running, um, which is fine. Um, we've got some little issues we've got to sort out with electrics. Again, I think the rectifier, we're checking the voltage, um, is not functioning, which is a common fault. These overheat, and we think that one's overheated because we're only getting about 11 and a half volts. So we're pretty much sure, unfortunately, we've got to change the rectifier as well. But you don't find these problems until you start doing the testing that. But interior's all done, and it's probably done cutaways, but the interior's all done. Uh, we put carpeted the tunnel top as per matching the back panels and stuff. Put some uh, trim in there, steering columns in with a quick release boss now as well, which is all rather nice. Um, Biggie dash is all plumbed in, switches, new gash in there, new fiberglass dashboard. Turn it off at the mains here. So, yeah, we start doing that, get it all buttoned up, brake mask in is done, we're testing the brakes. So, it's a little bit of fettling and testing time to make sure it's ready to go back to, uh, to its owner finally. So, yeah, that's cracking on with that. Right, we're over here with uh, hashtag Project Joseph. Um, as you saw last week, bonnet was fitted. Well, bonnet catches have now gone on. That's all been fitted in as well. Um, bulkhead panels all done, ready, um, including 
that will fit in to there. We include the header tank, battery fixings is all done. It's all cut out ready for mounting all of that uh, in there as well. The bulkhead's done. Um, yeah, and now we're on with uh, mounting the dashboard. Uh, dashboards, obviously we've got all the bodywork pretty much dry mocked up now. So dashboards going in with having a race column on this. Uh, centre tunnel is being fitted next. This is a, a, a solid column wheel, wheel weld on the uh, quick release boss again onto this one. So that'll be nice and neat and tidy. But uh, yeah, Dylan just cutting all the dashboard in, mounted it all. Uh, that's being finished off. So we're on with all niggly bits. Just going to finish off now with wiring loom coming for the centre. We've got the wiring loom uh, in. Um, these are a ready-made unit. We've just landed. So yeah, it's all in here. It looks terrible, but you know, it is what it is. There's a box of wires. So that's going in next as well. Um, that'll be one of the next jobs, uh, just to finish off running that. Oh, it's all been saddle bushed, ready to uh, accept all of that. So it's things like fixing the horn, that's been done now. That's all gone in, just down in here. Headlights have gone on. Um, so we're into the final details of bits and bobs that we're trying to fit up on it as well. But yeah, looking killer, like the orange, like the orange. So uh, yeah, progress um, and little bits and jobs, of course, but nothing that we want to, you know, we've got to, low level warning light switches gone in you know and things like that not particularly exciting things but they all add to the iva stuff that you need to do but it's taking shape quite nicely um yeah we move on to the next project now right next project that's starting obviously we've got the two boosters over there we're just buttoning up and doing testing with um a couple of bits to iron out on those we had some sensors we were waiting on which is very frustrating but that's where we're having them. They're sitting over there really much finished, which is why these two are now in the bay to be started as well. And this is hashtag Project Simon. So um, this is going to be the K20A installation. Uh, so I know there's a keen interest out there to see how it's all going to go together. Um, but yeah, we started on this mocking up. So it's going to have the Mazda uh, gearbox in here, the K20A engine. Um, and now what we've done, put in our billet pedal box, bulkhead panels uh, for the, um, oh, this is all laser cut part that we have done for the electrics that's done. Yeah, fuel lines have gone in, opposite side to the Mazda, plenum's opposite uh, that we do for those. So it's, um, even though it's Mazda gearbox and Mazda running gear, it's on the opposite side of the plenum. So the, these, all the fuel lines have gone in, floor pans have gone in, rear, rear panel's gone in as well. Um, brake light switches, master cylinders, all of that's gone in. Um, and you'll see this start to progress again, a bit like the other ones of the boosters, but I know there's a bit of interest in the K20A in what it's gonna do and how we're going to install it all we've made all the exhaust systems for it now that's been mocked up as well so hopefully in the next week you'll see the engine pop in here well probably a bit longer than a week but in the next week or so you'll see that pop in but follow us you'll see the k20 install i know i know it's a stonking engine it really is nice and revvy it's kind of that bike engine car engine theme a bit like the f20c that's in here um delivering you know strong eight to nine thousand rpm numbers big Decent horsepower, 200 plus, well north of 200, they're 200 stock. So it should be 220, probably 230, similar to the F20C in that kind of number. So yeah, really excited to get this one going, we was. Um, and I'm sure you'll see this evolve over the next few weeks. What a week, what a day. Anna's test drive, thumbs up to her. Bianca Canna, not Anna. <laughs> she enjoyed that much uh, it, was, it was great and just shows you actually how controllable that bike engine clutch can be for someone who's never even driven a car they're not that difficult yes it's a little bit when you get on as i say when you're trying to learn to ride a bike for the first time but once you've ridden it it only comes extremely natural if you want to know more about the k28 in the installation follow that and see how we get on with that as well but if you want information about it but it's basically it's an rx5 with a lot more horsepower in it as standard. So, unless you're going turbo, of course. But yeah, follow that, that'll carry on. Same as the F20C projects as well. So, and also, basically on the chassis thing, up here, I think we've put up for you, somewhere here, the next 10 builds that are going on, the chassis register. So we're just trying to keep you informed about what's going on in the next 10 builds, and your name will be up there. It'll be your initials or your first parts of your initial names and your first digits of your postcode. So you'll be able to see how we're getting on and how the queue is coming down for you. So the next 10 projects, you can see that up here or down there. See where they put it on the screen, do the okie but it'll be all up there somewhere for you as well. But if you've got any questions on that, give us a shout. That's it, guys. Like, share, catch you next week.